is good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic Mod Am Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have your WWE Extreme Rules Horror Show 2020 predictions. As you guys know, we're going to run through the entire WWE Extreme Rules car, breaking down all of the matchups, what I think about them, all my personal thoughts and opinions on the matches themselves, give you my predictions for the match, what I think of the storyline right now, how I think it's been going, where we could go from here, and everything in between. You know, coming into this show, I think so far there's only six matches announced, so there may be one or two more matches added to the car. Maybe not, though. You know, you never know. I'm guessing the show will probably be around two hours, possibly. You know, with the no-crowd shows, it seems that they've shortened up the shows a lot. So this may be all we get. We may only get six matches, but it's called the Horror Show, which I'm really, really just confused by. I don't know where that came from. I'm not sure why they're going with that. It's just very weird. You know, they usually like to stick that in October. You know, they save that for Hell in a Cell and stuff like that, but Horror Show just sounds crazy. Maybe because we're going to get, like, a, you know, a cinematic CGI, like, gruesome horror type stuff like we would see in Hollywood. But I don't know, Brad. We're going to find out together. I'm going to break down this card, giving you all my personal thoughts and opinions on the matches. And let's go ahead and dive into Extreme Rules 2020. All right, guys, so we're starting things off with the United States Championship match between MVP taking on Apollo Crews for the brand new U.S. Championship. I'm guessing, you know, uh, Apollo Crews has been toting around the older version, and MVP has been toting around the brand new version, which, give or take whatever version you like better, who cares at this point. But Bobby Lashley will absolutely be in MVP's corner, which makes me think that he could actually win the U.S. Championship. Hopefully, they don't do Apollo Crews that way. I don't think MVP needs this championship. I think that he fits perfectly in the role of Bobby Lashley. Being the mouthpiece, all that, he doesn't need a U.S. championship. Keep the championship on Apollo Crews at this point. Keep building him up. They've done a good job. He's picked up some great victories along the way here as champion, and I think that should continue. I'm going to go Apollo Crews and hope to God that that is the result that we get, but I'm going to roll with Apollo Crews on this one, and hopefully it's a lot better match than I expect. MVP is great on the mic at this point, but I'm not too big on him in the ring at this point in his career, but maybe they'll pull one out here. Next up, guys, no, we do not have a women's tag team match. We have a SmackDown Women's Championship match between Bayley and Nikki Cross. Now, you know that Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss will more than likely be in those corners for this matchup here at Extreme Rules. So that is why I have all four women pictured. Sasha Banks has a championship match later on. So I think they will definitely accompany each other to the ring. I expect Bayley to go first because I think this is probably the lesser of the two matches. I think Asuka and Sasha is probably a much more high-profile match than Nikki Cross versus Bayley. Not to take anything away from them, but I think that Nikki Cross will be defeated here. I think that Bayley will retain the SmackDown Women's Championship, continuing to dominate with her reign, and it feels like yesterday I was sitting here talking about how Bayley needed to win and win to get her momentum up. Now she's on hot fire. I mean, she's won so much that she has uh, created a pretty great reign for herself with the SmackDown Women's Championship, and uh, she's been featured on every show, her and Sasha, every single show. It seems like they are popping up all over our TVs, and I expect that to continue right here. I think Bayley will retain over Nikki Cross don't really care much for Cross and Bliss as a team. Don't really see her winning the SmackDown Championship at this moment in her career. So I'm going to roll with Bayley. Now flipping things over to the Raw side of things, we have the Raw Women's Championship match between Asuka and Sasha Banks. Now this is a matchup that I'm very excited for. I think both ladies are going to tear the house down. Hopefully we get a lot of time between the two. Bayley will be in Sasha Banks' corner absolutely, just like we mentioned for Sasha on Bayley's corner in the SmackDown Women's Championship match. And I expect the, you know, the Kabuki Warriors to tag team together here. Kyrie Singh will more, more than likely be at ringside for Asuka. And with them doing battle weeks and weeks, you know, tag team championship matches and stuff... I absolutely expect uh, all four ladies, again, to be present at ringside for this for this matchup. So as far as predictions are concerned, I'm actually kind of... Uh, this one's kind of hard for me. I really think they're going to put all the gold on Sasha and Bayley. They're featured every week. It's the big profile matchup going into SummerSlam, or they may even wait. You know, they could even push it to Survivor Series. They could have Raw Women's Champion Sasha versus SmackDown Women's Champion Bayley. Champion versus Champion. That could be where the feud blows off. Or they may rush it and do it at SummerSlam. Either way is fine with me. I think it'd be cool to wait till Survivor Series. You can build it up, have them get along, get along, get along, have some cracks in the armor. Maybe we'll see cracks in the armor here at this show, even though Sasha wins. I guess we'll have to see. I would think that Sasha would win here, defeat Asuka, win the Raw Women's Championship, and let Sasha and Bayley hold all the gold going into SummerSlam, possibly retain there, help each other, and then end the feud at Survivor Series. I guess we'll have to see. That's probably how I would book it, but I'm going to go Sasha Banks to defeat Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship. 
Next up, guys, we have a matchup that I'm probably most looking forward to on the show, maybe outside of Drew and Ziggler. We have Seth Rollins taking on Rey Mysterio in an eye-for-an-eye eye match. Now, there's a lot of things that can go into this. First of all, I did hear that this could be a cinematic matchup, and I did also hear that we could get an eye being ripped out via CGI, you know, them computer editing graphics and stuff, making it where the eye comes out for one of these men. I'm not sure how they're going to do that. You know, Rey Mysterio's eye's already been ripped out to an extent or stabbed on the steel steps. Seth Rollins could be, you know, getting an eye taken out to take time off to be with Becky. I don't know how they're going to do that. I, I don't think that would be the case because I think the Monday Night Messiah is a focal point on Monday Night Raw. But another thing you have to think about is Aleister Black, Humberto Carrillo, Kevin Owens, Dominic, Austin Theory, Buddy Murphy. I mean, there's so many outside forces. There have been so many men revolved around this matchup that I have no idea what's going to take place. That's kind of why I'm extra intrigued to see how this thing goes, where it goes from here. I don't know what the end result of this feud is going to to be, but I feel like an eye for an eye match is pretty much the end of a feud, so I don't know. We're just going to have to see. Will Kevin Owens get involved? Will Aleister Black get involved? With a, You know, the disciples are absolutely going to get involved, right? I mean, that just makes the most sense. Oh, man. This one's kind of difficult for me. I gotta, I, I'm got i going to roll with my boy. I'm going to roll with Seth Rollins, Seth freaking Rollins, the Monday Night Messiah. I'm going to go with him getting a victory over Rey Mysterio. We could potentially see a heel turn by Dominic on his own father. Maybe a low blow cost him the match. I don't know. I, I'm just fantasy booking here, but that would be pretty interesting, even though I'm not a big fan of Dominic right now. I think that'd be pretty cool, but I'm going to roll with Seth Rollins and we'll see where we go from there. Next up, guys, we have the Blue Universal Championship match between Braun Strowman taking on Bray Wyatt in a swamp match. Or Wyatt Swamp Fight, apparently, is what it's called. So this is actually a matchup that I'm intrigued by. I think Bray Wyatt is so good, you guys know. I think he's one of the best promos in the business. I think he just makes everything feel real. He makes everything feel legitimate. And um, I just love his character, man. This, this return to the swamp gimmick Bray Wyatt and everything with the mind games and Braun Strowman and where he started. It's a pretty good story, you know. It's a pretty good story. While I'm not a big Braun Strowman fan, I still think the guy can do some pretty incredible things in the ring. And I'm, I'm looking forward to this match to see how it goes. I'm sure that this will probably be another cinematic match. I don't know if they're doing two or if this is the cinematic match that we will get at Extreme Rules. But it has potential. It has a lot of potential to uh, go pretty good. And I'm looking forward to it. I actually am looking forward to how this thing goes, how they write it, how they book it, how it's shot. And to be honest with you, I really want to see Bray Wyatt win the Universal Championship. Do I think it's going to happen? I don't know. It's kind of hard to say because I don't know if they want Bray Wyatt as champion going into SummerSlam or they still want Braun Strowman. You could have Bray Wyatt win the championship and then have the, the savior Roman Reigns come back for the championship at SummerSlam. I don't know. I really don't know where they're going with it, but I want to go Bray Wyatt. I'm going to go Bray Wyatt to win the Blue Universal Championship back from Braun Strowman and hopefully give us the reign that we've been wanting. Or we may just keep the championship off of Bray Wyatt to keep it on a wrestler and keep it out of the gimmick's hands, but you're going to hurt the gimmick's hands if he just keeps losing and losing and losing and never wins anything. So I don't know. I'm just glad it's not the fiend. I don't want to see the fiend. I like I like Bray Wyatt right here. You know what? I'm uh, I'm gonna roll a uh, yeah. I'm a uh, I don't know. I'm going Bray Wyatt. I'm just gonna stick with Bray Wyatt. F it. Now, for our main event, this may not even be the main event, guys. We could get something totally different than the WWE Championship match between Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler here. Now, you guys know I'm a huge Dolph Ziggler fan, and I am actually a pretty big fan of Drew McIntyre as well. Now, I will say, I don't think Zolf, Dolph Ziggler is going to win. I do not think he's going to win, but if he were to win, I would lose my John Brown mind. I think the whole world would mark out for me. I'd probably get tagged in a million things. And just know, we will lose our minds here if Dolph Ziggler wins the WWE Championship. It's not going to happen, you know? It's not going to happen. I don't expect it to happen, but I am going to be holding my breath a few times in this match, I'm sure. But I'm going to go Drew McIntyre to retain the WWE Championship. I just don't think it makes sense to put it on Ziggler, especially going into SummerSlam. You built up Drew, and I think Drew's going to hold the WWE title until at least we get some crowds back and we get a live crowd in front of this man because I think they, you know, he had the big moment at the Royal Rumble, but we never got to see him crown. We never got to see him as champion in person, so I think they're going to wait to that moment before they even think about taking the championship off him. So for that reason, I am going Drew McIntyre over my man Ziggler, but you know, I will be cheering for Ziggler, man. Low key, low key gonna be doing it. As far as a booking standpoint, Drew McIntyre definitely makes the most sense. But that pretty much does it for my WWE Extreme Rules 2020 predictions. Again, that's all the that's all the matches that have been announced so far. We'll, we'll just have to wait around. Maybe on Friday Night SmackDown, they'll announce something else. But until that point, that is all I got for you guys. If they, if they come out with any more matches, I will put them down in the comment section below and pin the comments so you guys can 
check out what my thoughts are. Maybe an Intercontinental Championship match with Matt Riddle and AJ Styles, possible rematch. I don't know. We'll just have to see, but that's going to do it for my predictions, guys. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.